Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sabbath School. Today we'll be talking about walking in God's way. Um, our first scripture will be Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. <clears throat> walking with God is like entering into an intimate heart relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. So our scripture is Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Let us draw near with true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience and our body washed with pure water. And right there is Sellers telling us about having faith in God and let us depart from evil and have a truth in us about who we are and walking with God. Walking in the ways of God mean that we are in close proximity with the ways of God. As we turn our attention towards God, we focus on his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. As we walk in the ways of God, we begin to notice all the beauty that God has created. You know, like you go out, on a beautiful sunny day and you look at the sky, the clouds, you look at the grass, the trees, the flowers. You know, a lot of people just pass us by. They don't take time to look at the beauty that God has created on earth for us. And we sometimes pass by those things also. But we have to understand if God created it's for us to enjoy. Amen. Walking in the ways of God, we diligently seek to please him and to share our heart with God. The things of our heart. He already knows, but we take the time to share with him what's going on in our lives, what's happening because he wants to hear from us, amen? Walking with God will require us to let some things go in our life. Letting go of things in our life. Amen. What things we need to let go to be able to walk in the ways of the Lord? You know, if you're heavy, with, with burdens on us, but you can't walk. It's gonna be a difficult task. It's heavy. You think about like if you see somebody hiking and they got the backpack on and they got all this stuff on and it's heavy, 50, 60 pounds. That's a lot of weight. And you don't, they don't walk real, with a heavy, um, a fast pace because it's a heaviness on them. So we have to let things go so our walk will be light. Our walk will be easy and we won't be weighted down with the things of the world. Amen. Oftentimes, the things that are surrounded by us are distractions. And we have to be on guard to not to be so easily distracted from what God is calling us to do. We have to align ourselves with the word of God and check our lifestyle. If we're talking about walking about the ways of God, we have to know his commandments, his statutes, his precepts, what he's ordered for us to do. Amen? Amen. Tasha, can you get Galatians chapter 5? 
Yes. Uh -huh. Verse 16. Prophet Janice, are you able to read this morning? Yes. Can you get Deuteronomy chapter 10? verses 12 through 13 and then 20 through 21 it's the same chapter chapter 10 verses 12 to 13 and then 20 to 21 thank you okay i got the verse the uh what is galatians, galatians 5 and 16 yes okay are you ready for me to read it now please all right. So it reads, this I say then, walk in the spirit that ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Would you care to, to lip, um, just talk about it a little bit? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I read that, I just feel like it's saying to listen to what God says and do what God says. Do it God's way. Like don't don't walk after my own thinking or my own way of looking at things because, um, you know, that's that's my flesh. If I look at it my own way, if I'm not listening to God or I have my own opinion of, of you know, how to look at life or situations, that's that's me. Or I look at how I can deal with things or how I can do things. But that's not what God is saying for me to do. Then that's me walking in my flesh. But if, if God is you know talking to me and listening to him and obeying what God is telling me, then that's me walking in, in the uh, spirit. That's what I get from it. And, you know, keep walking in the things of God. Those things of the world or the flesh, they will start to to shed off of us. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have to be worried about these things because we're walking in truth and love and kindness, all of those things. Mm -hmm. And those heavy things that weigh us down, they won't be on us. Amen. And we won't, we don't have a desire to fulfill the things of the flesh, you know, our, our desires for whatever it may be that's not of God or not of his ways. We won't have a desire. So a lot of times the desires is what will cause us to, to fall, to cause us not to be walking in the ways of God. It's the desires for us. Let's, let's say, I have a desire for, for ice cream and I just, I just desire ice cream. I desire my whole mentality is wrapped around getting some ice cream. Now I have to go and fulfill that because it's all inside of me. It's, it has consumed me. And then if I don't get it, I'm not satisfied. I may become irritated. I may become disrespondent. I may be just, I rate until I get my fix of ice cream. And I have to feel that desire in order for me to have comfort and peace within me. And you you see people, they either drunk, drugs, sex, food, whatever. They have these cravings. That's a desire. So we want to walk in the things of God and the ways of God. So those things will be pushed aside. They will be heavily beset us. And we won't be weighted down with those things. And we put on a garment of praise and joy and peace and love. Those things. Things that are light. Amen. Amen. Prophetess, do you want to read Deuteronomy? That uh, Deuteronomy 10 for okay. us. Deuteronomy 10 through 13. I mean, Deuteronomy 12 to Deuteronomy 10, verse 12 to 13. Okay. Yes. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? He requires you to fear him, to live according to his will, to love and to worship with him. To worship to love and worship him with all your heart and soul mm -hmm. and to obey the Lord commandments and laws that I am giving you today for your good 
Amen. So you're just talking about what God God requires of us to honor him, to respect him, um, to love him, um, and to just to uh, worship him, live according to his his will, not according to our will. Um it's just that uh you know and obey his laws. Uh, sometimes sometimes you know we get we we do get um because we we are born into sin that uh that sinful nature the, the the flesh do pop up on us and want us to do things that's not in the will of god but we have to remember that we belong to him and to be obedient to his will and his way because you know because of him we're not heavenly father because he loves us and these are the things that he requires of us and if we don't if we don't love the way he wants us to love then we don't respect him if we don't if we do the things of the world, don't we, then we're not honoring him. We're not obeying him because he does have a, a commandment. He has commandments that things that he expects us to follow. Like love right. thy neighbor, you know. Yeah. Honor thy, your mom and dad. So if you're not honoring your mom and dad as, as a child, then you're not you're not loving God because God is our heavenly father. He's the one that created us all. So it's the same difference. Right. And you know the fear of the Lord is there. It's not to be afraid of Him, it's but to, love him. to reverence Him. Yeah, to honor Him. To yeah. honor and Him. That's right. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and that in this in this part right here, it's not talking about being afraid afraid of Him, but you should be afraid. Let me say that like you yeah. should be afraid to do wrong. You should yeah. be afraid to do wrong. But He's He's telling you to love Him. But you should be afraid to do something. It's just like with your parents. If they tell you don't steal, you should be afraid to steal, you know, because they told you don't do that. It's, it's about being obedient. Yeah. But afraid, afraid, and this just means to love, to honor, to respect, to reverence him. Right. I'm going to give a few uh, definition required. Mm -hmm. Need for participation and cost to be necessary as into the need require a particular purpose. Mm -hmm. He said he requires of us that God mm -hmm. require of thee, requires of us to do something, to have a purpose, to have a to have a desire for his word, to have a desire to walk in his way. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then, like we just talk about fear of the Lord, and it just says the fear and awe that is God Himself, His immense and formidable nature. The fear of the Lord is a calling to revert. To, I'm sorry, to reverence and recognize the sovereignty and judgment of God. To be in a reverence awe of his holiness his glory his majesty his purity and his power to walk is to tread to a relaxed journey on foot for exercise of pleasure so if we're walking in the things of god and the ways of god it should be a relaxed journey we shouldn't mm -hmm. be heavy laden and trotted down and said, oh, woe is me. Mm -hmm. You know, it, sh it should be easy. And we know life gets complicated. Mm -hmm. It does. <laughs> we have to keep going. Mm -hmm. We have to keep walking through. <laughs> we have to keep moving forward. In the ways of God, in the things of God. There's another definition which is serve as to attend to, to have a servant, certain purpose <clears throat> to be used to give the service and respect due to a superior person, or, or we're talking about God. So we're going to serve with our whole heart. Mm -hmm. Because we have purpose. Amen. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Commandment. Something commanded. And we follow that. You mm -hmm. think about the military. Those men and women that are in the military. They have to follow the commands of their sergeants, lieutenants, generals, or whomever. Mm -hmm. And the same way with us. Mm -hmm. We have to comply the commandments of God to walk in his ways and do what he mm -hmm. asks us to do. Because it says about purpose, a certain purpose, not just any purpose, but we have specific assignments that God has instilled in us to do. Working with children, working with elderly, um, helping the homeless, doing outreach, whatever, preaching, teaching. What our certain purpose is, we should be yes. able to walk in those things and fulfill the things that God wants us to do as he has commanded us to do. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Thou should fear the Lord thy God and serve him and cleave to him. He is our praise. He is our everything. And he is great and mighty. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. So in Deuteronomy eleven twenty two, it says, for if you are careful to keep all this commandment, which I command you to do, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and hold fast to him. Mm -hmm. We walk in the ways of God. We keep all of the commandments. But it says be careful because we know if we don't, there's that little bit of deceit. There's that little bit of deception. There's a little bit of, let's say, fear that comes into us. Mm -hmm. But we have to be careful and be mindful of the ways of God, the things of God, and keep all his commitments. We can't keep some and forget about the others. Yes. And we walk in his way and hold fast. That means when the storms of life are coming against us, <clears throat> our anchor holds, the word holds, the truth holds. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, Tasha, can you get Psalms 32, 8? And Prophetess, can you get First John 3, one first John Psalms 31. First John and, and Tasha, you have Psalms 38. I'm I'm sorry, 32 and verse 8. We're talking about the, the ways of God, Missy. That um how we walk in the ways of God, how we how we're faithful to him, he's faithful to us, how we keep all of his commands, amen. 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 All right, so I got it. All right. Um, so Psalms 32 and 8, it reads, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Amen. And uh, probably just read, read 1 John 3, 4, 1. First John three verse one. Uh, okay, three. Okay, it said, "See how very, see how very much our heavenly Father loves us, for He allows us to be called His children, and we really are. But the people who belong to His to this world don't know God. I think I'm. At, that's still one. Okay, so they don't understand that we are His children." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either it. one of you all want to talk about that? About uh, First John three, with it, it's just saying as believers, we we belong to God. Um, everything God about us, our foundation is God, and um, He called us. He called us His children because it's just that we're adopted into the family, and so but we we are His now, you know, because we believe in Him. We believe in 
what he has done. You know, so we belong to him. So um, he just encouraged us to live uh, a good life, you know, to be obedient because we're part of the family now. Right. Mm -hmm. And then she read a card that says that the world don't know him. Yeah, they don't. Did they don't know him. Right. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, they don't know him. They don't understand that we are his children. So they don't understand that part right there. But it, I, like I said, it's just like adoption. If you adopt a child, then that child is your child. So we adopted into the kingdom. It's the same right. difference, but they don't understand it like that. You know, because we believe in him. You know, and we accept him as Jesus is our Lord and Savior. That we know that he laid down his life on the cross for us. So <laughs> it's just like adoption. You know, he adopted us. You know, so when somebody adopt a, a child, that's their child, you know, right. and they love that child and they treat, treat that child as if they had that child. You know what I'm saying? So and, and so I guess I, I, everybody's different in their in their in their understanding of things. But that's that's the way I see it. He adopted us into the kingdom because we believe right. in him. Mm hmm. But the Pastor, did you want to talk about Psalms 32 and 8? Yeah, sure. Um, when I read this, I feel like um I feel like it's just saying that God is like willing to teach us. He's he's willing to show us the right way. So because he says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. So God, God sees everything, he knows what the best way for us is, and I feel right. like he's willing to like teach us his way so that we see it through his eyes and not through our own uh, you know our own way but his way because his way is the best way so that's right right mm -hmm. okay god loves to be in relationship with us and we can converse with him through prayer and reading his his word, hearing his love and gaining wisdom for us in our life daily. So we, like you just said, we the, the instruction <clears throat> and the teaching of the ways of God, we get it through prayers and readings, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and hearing the word, amen? Amen. Okay. I'm going to get the next scripture, which is in case somebody who wants to write it down, it's Matthew 6 and 24. Matthew 6. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6 and 24. No man can serve two masters. Either he will hate one and love the other or else he will be whole to one and desire the other you cannot serve god and man <clears throat> excuse me for a second <laughs> all right <laughs> so in this scripture it tells us we can't serve God and the world. Right. We can't be in the world and serving God. We have to separate ourselves from the world and the things of the world and walk in the ways of God. <clears throat> you know, in Revelation talks about being hot or cold, either one. But if you're warm and lukewarm and you're in the middle, think about it. You can't drive, you can't have, drive them down the middle of the road, can you? You either in one lane or the other. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. <laughs> so if you cross over the other line, you, you're gonna have an accident. Right. You see people weaving on the other side, and you be like, Lord, help them get back in the right lane. That's right. And that's the same way with us. <clears throat> we have to know that we're in the right lane, on the right path, walking in the ways of God. Yeah, there may be trials and tribulations. 
Yes, life might get hard, but we serve an almighty God who instructs us, just like he just instructs us of his ways and his doing and his command. So we follow that, we'll be all right. It's like making a cake <clears throat> or whatever you're cooking. It has instructions, right? Mm -hmm. It tells you how many eggs, how many, how much uh, milk to put in, what time to set the, <laughs> the temperature, how long it needs to be. Those are instructions, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Same way with us. This Bible that we read and have and learn from, those are our instructions. Those that help us how to walk in the things of God and the ways of God. All right, Tasha, can you get Romans 13, verse 14? And Providence, can you get Psalms number one, verses one through three? <clears throat> Walking with the Lord means that you live to please him and not ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're not man pleasers. We're trying to be um, egotistical. That's when you're pleasing yourself. I, 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 I did this. I did this. I did I, I, I. That's an ego. Walking with God means that you live to please him. Mm -hmm. We cut off all the things in our lives that keep us from walking in the ways of God. We talked about that earlier. <clears throat> we have to cut out some things. Mm -hmm. We have to stop going to certain places, hanging around certain people. Those mm -hmm. people that can easily influence us to walk away from the things of God. Mm -hmm. Those things that will cause us to walk away from the things of God or the ways of God. And you know, it's, it's it's not easy. I mean, we've all had a past and we're still dealing with stuff right now. But we can't let our past so influence our present, our future, that we don't know our purpose in Christ. I'm so stuck in my past and what I did and what I didn't do and what somebody said or whatever, that I can't even walk in the ways of God. I can't even live the life that God has for me because I'm letting this stuff hold me back and hold me down. I'm not free. And we talked about the, the camper going camp with that big backpack on <clears throat> and it's heavy. Those things in our past and those places that we shouldn't be going or doing, they will weigh us down. It's heavy. We don't want that in our life. We want to walk a journey of life that is light and easy. Mm -hmm. and have, we know we know we're gonna have burdens. We know we're gonna bills and all this stuff, but we have to trust in God that He will provide mm -hmm. as we walk on this journey. God is motivated. by us he's motivated Lord. we pray we honor him that's motivation guess what he does he blesses us mm -hmm. he said look at my child fulfilling her and his purpose in life i'm well pleased see we don't have to wait then we can get it now mm -hmm. look at my servant I'm well pleased. Amen. Mm -hmm. Can you give this Romans 13, verse 14? Yep, I got it. And Romans 13 and 14 reads, but but ye, I'm sorry, hold on. I'm going to start over. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh 
to fulfill the lust thereof. So what that says to me is uh, that I got to put on Jesus Christ, meaning I got to take on his ways. I got to take on the way Christ thinks. I got to take on the way Christ would do things, like the way he will love, the way he will, you know, look at life through God's eyes. So I feel like that's pretty similar to the other verse. So we just got to take on, we got to let the Lord lead us and guide us and take on the way that Christ will look at things. In other words, take on the way God will look at things um, so, so that we don't do what our flesh will want us to do. Right. Anyone else? So, Prophetess, can you read Psalms 1? Okay. One through three. Okay. So one through three. Uh, Psalms one. Oh, the joy of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with scoffers. But they mm -hmm. delight in thing the Lord wants day and night. They think about His law. They mm -hmm. are like a tree planted along the riverbank, bearing fruits each season without fail. Their leaves never wither, and in all they do, they prosper. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. You want to speak on that, please? Um, I guess this is the attitude that God wants us to have. He wants us not to be around people talking about people or doing things like that. It's not walking in the things of the Lord. Um, if if and I think He said if we if we if we insist on having friendship. With those that are um, mocking God, that um, we would we would not be like in the will of God. We we sin we sin by becoming um, indifferent, and so that's one way we could be indifferent. We could not be in the will of God is by judging people, is by um, sitting up laughing at people, um, uh, just doing things that's not like God like God like. He wants us to be diligent and obedient to, and so mm -hmm. he can bless, you know, in the things that are healthy. Uh, he wants to bear good fruits so we can be blessed. He wants to be strong and because uh, he promised to take care of us. He promised to watch over. He promised to guide us, you know, and if we just trust in him and if we live our life to, like the way he wants us to live it. And uh, a lot of times we don't, a lot of times we don't even realize that when sitting around people that's, talking about people are talking about God's especially God's people we don't realize that um, we're not in the will of God we're not, we're not doing what he wants us to do that we're mocking him you know mm -hmm. as we're doing things like that we think it's just okay it's not me talking it's them talking but you're there with them and that's going into your spirit too and you're not disagreeing with them mm -hmm. and when you're sitting there sometimes with people you are in agreement with what they're saying because if you're not in agreement with it you wouldn't be there you'll get away from it and that's, and that's what he's talking about right there. So we need to learn how not to be around those people, not to get advice from people like that. You know, and, and, and advice mm -hmm. coming to like, when you're going to see a psychiatrist, if you're going to see a psychiatrist that's not safe, you got issues going on. They're going to give you medicine. They're not going to be talking about God. They're not going to be talking about body and the spirit. They're not going to be talking about the spiritual things of the Lord and how to help you spiritually and give you a word from the Bible, how to help you to get healed, delivered, and set free. They're not going to do that. They're going to be in a, a, a in the worldly way. It's going to be their way. Even when you're going to see doctors, the worldly way is going to be their way. Even when you're going to see um just anybody, their way is going to be their way. It's going to be the way of the world. It's not going to be the way of God, what the word of God says. And so we have to be careful about things like that. Not saying nobody don't go see doctors. You go see your doctor. But I'm just saying, I like to ask mine sometime how they say, do they believe in Jesus? You know, because if they don't, it makes a difference to me, you know, in, in what you believe in, you know, when I'm coming to see you. So everybody's entitled to live their life the way they want to. But in the world is saying that we simply um, have to have wisdom. Uh, we need godly wisdom and in, 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 in being um, in the wrong company. We got we can't be in the wrong company. We have to separate ourselves from the world. The world says that we have to separate ourselves from them, and we must do that because it's not nourishing to our soul. It's not nourishing to um, us spiritually 
to be um, in contact around an unbeliever, someone that's wicked, somebody that's evil, somebody that despise God, some, somebody that don't even know God, somebody that don't even love God. It doesn't benefit us. It doesn't nourish our spirit. It doesn't nourish our soul. You know, God loves us and he wants us to live a, um, a, a prosperous life, you know, right. but we got the moment, yeah. And, and you know the words say that standeth in the ways of sinners, <clears throat> nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Think about this: you go to your friends, your best friend's house, a family's house, and you sit down. The first thing you do is get comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't want to get comfortable in that sin, that that mm -hmm. the things that would draw us away from the way of walking with God. We don't mm -hmm. want to sit down and sit in it, like you were saying, and be in it and let it consume us and our hearts. Mm -hmm. Because sooner or later, like you were saying, that stuff is going to get, then you go say, girl, yeah, you right. Yep. You going to start agreeing with them. Yes, you will. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read this. I didn't put this on there, but I'm going to read this because it kind of captures the rest of it. It's verse 6. For the Lord knows the ways of righteousness, but the ways of the ungodly shall perish. So we got to be careful who we're, like you're saying, who we're talking with, what are we saying, where are we where are we sitting down, where we're, where we're getting our doctrine from. Mm-hmm. We got to know the truth, the truth of the way to walk in the ways of God. We got to know the truth. Mm -hmm. And one thing that must, one thing that come, one thing that come to my mind, sister, when you say where we get our doctrine from. I remember when Apostle was talking one time. You know, when you're around someone, when you got a leader that lies all the time, and you're around that leader and they're teaching you, then all of a sudden you wonder why you're telling a lie. You're lying all the time. You're acting out the things that they they that they are because they are your leader and they are teaching you. And so you, you really do have to be careful about doctrine and how people are living their life. If they're not. Not that you're judging them, but if you know if you're talking to them and they tell you their words don't match up with the word of God. <laughs> right. And so it's a lie. And when you when you up under them and they teaching you that, then they're teaching you the wrong doctrine. That's what I'm saying. And you're walking by that. And so it's harmful to you. So we just really have to be careful about where we go and, and sit at and and listen to. And and, and, and so and like and like Sister Yvette said, guilty by association, <laughs> associate with in this mm -hmm. world. We have to really be careful because we are kingdom kids. And you know, you're on a track. If you go to, let's say, church. And they don't ever pull out the word of God. There's That's no right. scripture on the screen. <laughs> That's right. You know, say, go test the word I just said. Open your Bible. This is a scripture. And it's just him, him or her just talking, talking. Mm -hmm. They may they may say John 12 and 13, but you don't, they never tell you to open it. And you don't know what the word says if you don't have you open it up. That's why you're just taking that man a woman's word for. It. That's oh, right. that's the bishop, pastor, teacher, you know, Indian chief, whatever it may be. And we never take the time to go back and research and say, "Did Psalms one, one through three, really say that?" Yeah, did it really say the that? First John, what do we say? First John three one. Oh, first John three and one. Did it really say yeah, that? Yeah, did, did it say that? Mm hmm Yeah. That's why he tells so we can't, we can't be blinded <clears throat> by someone else's doctrine if it doesn't line up. Remember, we talked about alignment, being mm -hmm. aligned and walking in the ways of God. You think about your car. If you had ever car and it's out of line, it's 
doing like this, wobbling and going on. Mm -hmm. That's how we can end up confused. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because we don't know the truth. We heard a man or a woman teach us something, but we haven't gone to research to see if it's the truth. It came out of the word of God. That's right. You know? Yeah, and that's why As we got say, so get out, walking. You don't know which way you're going. Yeah, that's why mm -mm. see that you don't know which direction you're going. Mm -mm. Uh, e Ezekiel 18 and 9. If we walk in through my statutes and my or and my ordinance, so as to deal faithfully, he is righteous and will surely live, declares the Lord God. That's Ezekiel 18, 9. If we walk in the statutes and the ordinance, which are the commandments of God, and deal faithfully. He, which is God, mm -hmm. is righteous to make sure that we have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. uh, Tasha, can you get 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18? Second Corinthians chapter three, verse 18. And prophetess, can you get Philippians two verses 12 through 13? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, look, my, my computer's saying it lost connection. So I don't know if I'm about to disappear or whatever. Like I said, if <laughs> I'll come back, I'm trying to. I guess my connection's up and down here with the signal. I'm sorry. And somehow I got two connections. So yeah. But we're gonna we're gonna go through. We're gonna walk on through this. Second <laughs> uh, Corinthians three. If you lose we lose you, somebody else will pick up. We ain't gonna stop. <laughs> Ain't no stars now. <laughs> Did you get it? Okay. But we all with open face beholding as a glass and glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as the spirit of the lord Amen so what this is saying you know when you look at yourself in the mirror you see yourself right you see your image mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the image we also have to see is the christ in us yes if we're walking in the ways of god we'll see christ in in us in ourselves we gotta start mm -hmm. with ourselves first before we go somewhere else mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and change into that same image the image of christ mm -hmm. the love of christ the love of god not the backbiting the backstabbing the gossiping none of that sitting in the seats of scornful or ungodly people, ungodly yeah. counsel, like you were saying before. Mm -hmm. But we're walking in the image of Christ, who God is, his characteristics. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2. Philippians 2, verse uh -huh. 12 and 13, right? Yes, ma'am. It says, um, dear friends, you were always so careful to follow my instructions when I was with you. And now that I'm away, you must be even more careful to put into action uh, saving words in your life. Obeying, obey, obeying, obeying God, obeying God with deep reverence. 
and fear. Verse 13, for God is working in you, giving you the desires, desire to obey him and the power to do what please him. Amen. Did you want to stick it? It's just telling us to, um, I guess it's just really saying for us to, um, friends said friends, so together, us entirely as a church, to work together, um, not to have, um, just to be like, I say even-minded, not not showing discord, you know, stuff like that, division. And as he he was talking to the church, then was here. He was talking to the church, so he wants to walk in obedience. Be careful to walk in obedience. Um, just continue doing what was right. Uh, see, we got to be careful how we live. So you know, people watching us, so we got to be careful how we live. Um, we are not. Um, we're we're not. It's, it, my life is not my. Own. Life it belongs to God, so I got to focus and pay attention and be devoted to Christ. Um, not get sidetracked. Um, just just being a just being a um, just walking in the will of God. You know, God he, he he's still with us. We're not he's he's not we're not working along. You know, he's still with us, um, and um, he's going to help us. God is going to help us to um, walk in that obedience if we let him. Um, we just have to submit to him and let him control our life, let him guide our life. Um, just let him help us in the things that we need helping in. And sometimes we want to do it on our We got to let his Holy Ghost power do what is going to be right for, um, for God because we want to please God. And the only way we can please God is we got to do the right things. Just walk in obedience. And it's not about it's not about me trying to um do it all by myself. It's, it's we as a team, we as a, a church, we do the right thing together. We're gonna we'll struggle, but we got to do it together. We if we struggle together, we can come out victorious together. And a lot of times we don't want to talk to people about stuff and things like that. I, I just do it by myself, but it's better. It's better to have help. It's better to have someone that can show you how they got through, how they went through. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So as a church, we're gonna struggle together, but we're gonna we're gonna come out victorious if we keep our faith in God and we keep letting the Holy Spirit guide us and instruct us and just being obedient to God as as a church. Because I think at this he was talking to the church, but even as the church, my church, me, me, my church, let the Holy Spirit guide me and instruct me. Don't don't fight against it, you know, because God is with me. Don't don't get to the point. I think God, oh, woe is me. God is not with me. I'm by myself. No, He's with me. He's with me when I'm by myself. When I think I'm by myself, He's with me. He's with us as the church. You know, it may not seem like things is going right, but He's still with us as the church. Me. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And, just and, the, and verse 13 says, for it is God which worketh in you yes. both to will and to do, not for our pleasure. The word of God says, his good pleasure. Yep, his good, good pleasure. Remember we talked about we're going to please God. Yeah. It's not it's for us. Mm -hmm. We're motivating him. Now he's gonna he, he's gonna work things out. Mm -hmm. But what we all say, God get the glory. God get the glory. Right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yep. So our uh, next scripture is I have it. It's Galatians, Galatians 5, 22, 23. So we all know this is the fruit of the spirit. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, mm -hmm. long suffering, gentleness, mm -hmm. goodness, faith, mm -hmm. meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Mm -hmm. Mm 
love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Let's talk about those first. Love. Love God and love thy name. There's a command that Jesus told us. Love thy God with all your heart and your neighbors as you love yourself. And your neighbors. Mm -hmm. As you love yourself. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. We don't have to make it complicated. Mm -mm. Joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So I had all these written down with scriptures about joy and peace and long suffering. So if somebody wanted to just jot them down, you can. So for love, I had Deuteronomy 6, 5. For joy, Zephaniah, Z-E-P-H-A-N-I-A-H. Chapter 3, verse 17. For peace, John 14, 27. Long suffering, Numbers 14, 18. For gentleness, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 1. For goodness, 1 Timothy 2, 2. Chapter, I mean, I'm sorry. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. For, ba for faith, <coughs> Habakkuk, H-A-B-A-K-K-U-K. Chapter 2, verse 4. For meekness, 2 Timothy 2, 25. For temperance, Titus 1, verse 8. And these are just a breakdown of the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. you, you think about an apple, orange, or banana. You see the outside, but you don't know what's inside truly until you open it up, right? Mm -hmm. The banana may look good on the mm -hmm. outside. You cut it, but it might have some brown spots. You didn't even know. The apple, you cut it. It may have brown stuff. You don't know. You won't know until you open up the fruit, the love, the joy, the peace, the long stuff. You got to open these things. You got to unlock these things. Open them up and see. Hey, I can love. I got joy. I got peace. I can share. I can share my peace. I, 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 can, I, can, I can be I can be gentle. When all hell is breaking loose. I got some temperance. I'm even minded. I'm not chaotic. I have faith in God. And I can suffer through. If Jesus died on that cross and bled and died for me, who am I? Who am I? Just something to think about. Now that I took time and found those scriptures for me. Maybe you can go through and find scriptures for you about love, joy, peace, long suffering, the fruit of the spirit. Because mm -hmm. this is the ways that we're gonna walk. We gotta walk in love. We gotta walk in peace. And we put on the whole armor and said, and shod your, your feet with the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it say that? Is that the word of God? About the armor? 
Mm -hmm. The armor of God. Put on the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. We got to have faith. You got to have faith if you believe that you can do all these things, all these other things, and walk in these ways. We got to have faith. Anyone have anything they want to share about that? Okay, so this Exodus 33 and 13. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight. Consider that this nation is thy people. That's Exodus 33, 13. Okay. If I find grace in God's sight, but by, by, by the spirit, by walking in his way, it's, and show me now that way. Lord, which way should I go? Which way should I walk? Which way, what should I do? Then I may know thee. Then I may know him and his purpose for me. Then I may find grace when I mess up. When mm -hmm. I don't do it right. Well, I might not have some joy, but I got your grace. Mm -hmm. I got your love and kindness. I got your mercy. And consider this nation. We the nation. We the people of God. We the heirs of the kingdom of God. We join heirs with Christ. It's us. Yes, they were talking about the people that were coming out of Egypt. But we have had our own Egypt. Mm -hmm. We have had our own wilderness experiences. But I want to find grace in God's son. Lord, have mercy on me. Show me your glory. Shine your light on me that I may walk in your ways. Amen? Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. Can someone get Psalms 25? And four, I think Tasha, Tasha, you still on here? Yeah, I came back. Thank you. All right, you, you said okay. Something. Well, I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. Prophet is McClendon. Can you get 25 and four in Psalms? And Tasha, you get Psalms 86 11. So, Prophet is 25, Psalms 25 and four. Go back and <laughs> go back and read do Exodus, Exodus 33. That, that that was pretty good right there, y'all. <laughs> mm -hmm. You said 8511. So, okay, so you have 86 oh. 11. 86. And Prophetess McClendon has 25 and 4 out of Psalms. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Can you read? Okay, it's 25 and 4. It says, uh -huh. show, me the, show me the path where I should walk, O oh Lord. Point out the right road for me to follow. Mm -hmm. We just said that, right? Yep, and you just ask God to guide you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other so scripture says to instruct us. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Instruct us, guide us, you know, so that we can do the right thing, you know. We got to learn from him. We got to learn from his word. We got to obey his commandments. And we got to receive his guidance in mm -hmm. his wisdom. You know, we just got to, we got to trust him. We got to go by God's direction. That's what it says. Just, God, I trust you. So lead me, show me, guide me, instruct me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, you, it says, I will 
make me know. You know, you think about raising your children. You had to make them know not to touch something that was hot. Mm -hmm. You had to make them know, don't go outside by yourself or something like that. Or don't cross mm -hmm. the street. Mm -hmm. So those are the ways of instruction. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so we will go that way. That's right. We have to be willing. That's right. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you, when you, I guess sometimes, I, sometimes when I pray to God, I tell him, um, just me, even if, I'll be saying, God, even if I try to go the wrong way, you stop me. You don't <laughs> let me do that. And that's giving up my will to do the wrong Amen. thing for his will. For me to do the right thing and so well jesus sometimes we have to say it like that you know and i think that's what really what he was saying you know when he was telling him to guide him you know if i want to go in the wrong direction you just don't let me i'm gonna give up my will for you to do the right thing in your will for me because we mm -hmm. really don't they think he said he said his thoughts are not our thoughts you know, so in we can ways. think of things. Yeah, in his ways. We can think of things, but it still could be wrong. You know, so we just need that that guidance where we where we where God is just he got his hand. He like you said, parents, he turning me right. Mm. <laughs> he turning me left. Mm -hmm. I'm not turning myself. That's what we need. Like we're a robot. He turning us this way. He turning us that way. He moving us forward. He moving us back. He moving us. Mm -hmm. You know, not me moving Amen. myself. Amen. That's how. Hey, so you know what? If I move myself, I'm gonna keep going around the same old circle. Amen. Amen. Yes. yes. God said, yes. I just told you to turn right. I ain't tell you to keep going in that circle. Just yes. turn right. Uh -huh. Don't turn right and left and right and left. No, just <laughs> turn. Yep. Today, mm -hmm. Lord. Uh, Today, yeah. Lord. You do it for me. <laughs> but Janice just ain't got it. She all, all up on the left field. <laughs> mm -hmm. I yeah. told you to go right and you're going. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why I mm -hmm. sometimes when I pray, I said, when I pray, I said, if I choose to go the wrong way, you guide me. Don't you, let you don't you let me go. Don't you let me do wrong. That's right. Your will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I give up my will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he would. Hey, thank you, Miss Eva. All right, Tasha. Psalms eighty six eleven. What you got for us? <laughs> the Psalms eighty six eleven says, "Teach me Thy way, O Lord. I will walk in Thy truth." Unite my heart to fear thy name. So it's like this they're they're asking God to just teach him his ways, which is good. Um, and that he and that his heart will be united with the heart of God. Again, just similar to what we've been saying, you know, for us to just, you know, to to learn God's ways, learn what, what God likes and what God doesn't like and how we can walk in, in God's truth. And that our hearts will will be like the heart of God. That mm -hmm. we we'll just want to obey God, obey God from our heart, and to fear God from our heart. Here's me. So I just again, if I can say the same thing. A lot of other verses say that we just, you know, honor God and just learn learn His ways and and let Him teach us and lead us and guide us. Let's make a connection right right here. Unite my heart. What are you gonna unite? Unite. Uh, I'm sorry. What are you gonna unite your heart with? What are you gonna unite it with? Think about that for a second. Unite my heart. Yeah. Your heart. You remember the scripture say, <laughs> out of the heart, the what speak? 
Out of the bus of the heart, the mouth. So that, that heart got to be united with that mouth. You see the connection? Because I got whatever is in my heart, I'm going to speak forth. Yes. I'm going to know that my heart will trust God. Now I got to speak it. Mm -hmm. I know in my heart that he loves me. So now I got to what? Speak it. Speak it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I already know to reverence God, to honor him, fear him in my heart. Mm -hmm. But can I speak it? Mm. That you, I think we talked about this one about joining together. Joining together our heart, our mind, mm -hmm. and what we speak. Mm -hmm. I can think a thing, but if I don't speak it, it's just a thought in my head. Mm -hmm. But it's in my heart. It's coming out. It's coming out. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Psalms 128 and 1. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walk in his way. How simple is that? Blessed. Oh, what's the Psalms 128 verse what? 1. Oh, okay. Let's do it like this. Blessed. It's Tasha that feared the Lord and walk in his way. Mm -hmm. Blessed is Janet that feared the Lord and walk in his way. Blessed is Yvette that feared the Lord and walk in his way. Blessed is Apostle Parker that mm -hmm. feared the Lord and walk in his way. Blessed is, is Apostle Nelson. Tanisha, Tamika, Dietrich, Bishop Gordon, Bishop Robinson, Matt, Prophet, is, uh, Pro Prophet uh, Marcus. Who am I missing? Sister Ann. Sister Ann, bless is Ann that feeds the Lord and walks in his way. You, you see how we can put ourselves in there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We talked about Deuteronomy 28. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the fields. I'm coming and going. Blessed are, blessed are we. It said everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm a one. Are you a one? Mm -hmm. You got to search are your you name. A one? And... Huh? I said you got to search you your say? name. And what you got to search your name and what God said about you. He said it. Mm -hmm. so he said, speak. "My people, so I, I'm a hint of people." Yeah, right. You, but but you see the simplicity in it. Anybody have any comments about that? All right, let me summarize this, and then we'll be done. It is important that we walk in the ways of God every day so that others can see the glory of god and be amazed as the contrast who we are from what we were and who we are now walking in the ways of god that i mean means that we can imitate him and his ways Amen. Mm -hmm. If you all are taking notes, the rest of that was just Deuteronomy 20, 28. Uh, just read Deuteronomy 28. <laughs> we talked mm -hmm. about it not too long ago. Anyone have any questions, comments, uh, or repeating of verses that you want? Me too.
Okay. Natasha, you can you can stop the recording.